moron! Hey, moron! Well, good Monday morning, friends. Mark Holmes here, of course, with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. And let me say, remember what today is about. Today is remembering all of those who are no longer here and thanking those who made the ultimate sacrifice to keep this country free. And from the bottom of my heart, let me say for those who are no longer here, as well as each and every one of those that are, that are still living with the effects of what they've been through for this country and those who are serving right now, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Without you guys, we are not the country that we are. And I appreciate each and every one of you guys. So right now, it's the quiet before the storm. Uh, we have OTAs again, starting up again tomorrow. Um, it is believed that Micah Parsons will be here for OTAs, hopefully. Uh, CD Lamb, probably not so much. Now, let's, let's clarify a couple of things here. First of all, CD Lamb kind of posted on Instagram um, a video where he is working out. He's working out really, really hard um, and things. And some people take this maybe as more than what it is. I always say, read between the lines. It's, he has life in red, dot, 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 comes with a price. Now, you could say he is saying that in order to achieve it costs you i can definitely agree with that 100 percent, because you only get out of it what you put into it and i will give you a great example um i have worked with quite a few other youtubers and you know they always ask what's the secrets to youtube and this that and the other there are a few little tricks and things but the biggest secret is and this goes beyond YouTube. This goes into life and anything that you're doing. You only get into, get out of it, what you put into it. Unfortunately, we've become the generation that believes that everybody owes us something and you're going to get your participation trophy and um, just by being there. But life doesn't work that way. I didn't get to 116,000 subscribers by just sitting on my fat. Well, actually, I did sit on my ass a lot because usually I'm sitting down when I'm doing my videos and my ass is fat, but I'm working while I'm sitting on my fat ass. I'm doing the research. I'm putting in the videos. You know, people will say, you know, yeah, you, you do, you know, 10 million videos a day. Yeah, well, that's what it takes to beat the algorithms. That's what it takes to be seen. That's where it is, where it's a crowded space. you got to do stuff to be recognized. You have to put in the work. And I have to say, I am so proud of my buddy, Game Time Brian, who literally, last year when we went to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, he was hoping to get to 300 subscribers. A year later, he's at 20,000. And that didn't happen because, you know, it all just fell into his lap. It's because he busted his ass. He spent the time to learn. He spent money investing in what he does. He's taken his lumps from people. He's done the research. And that's where you get results. If you don't put in the result, the work, you're not going to get the results. But today's society, everybody's expecting the results without putting in the work. So I can look at it and say, that's what he's saying. In order to get life. It comes with a price. In order for me to be great, I got to put in the work. And that should be seen as a motivation. That's one way to look at it. The second way you could kind of look at it is, if you want me to be a lifelong cowboy, that comes with the price. As in, cowboys, I'm not going to be cheap. 
Now, I don't believe that there's any animosity in C.D. Lamb, Dak Prescott's, or Micah Parsons' situation. I think all of them realize we're going to get paid. And in C.D.'s case, we don't know if he's waiting to see if Dak gets signed because that has a true bearing on what's going to happen with him. Do you look at it and say, I want to have Dak Prescott throwing the ball to me because that guy, the years I've worked with him, made me an all-pro. Say what you will about the playoffs. The reason I'm in this position is because the guy who's throwing the football in there is throwing it into a position where I can catch it. Now, some of y'all don't see that correlation, but if you've got a guy who's constantly hitting the dirt because he's afraid of standing in the pocket, a guy who's throwing the football in the dirt, or throwing interceptions all over the place and think that CeeDee Lamb is going to have the same numbers in production-wise without Dak Prescott, you're a fool. You have to give Dak Prescott some credit to getting the ball to CeeDee. For example, for example, and this is where people will say, well, the Cowboys' offensive line, you know, they were great last year in pass protection. Maybe, but do you remember the longest play from scrimmage CD had last year where Dak Prescott was about to be sacked in the end zone for a safety? And somehow Dak Prescott escapes while keeping his eyes on CD Lamb and gets the ball to him. I believe that was a 90-some yard play. CD doesn't get that. 90 some yard play does not get that reception if the quarterback doesn't get away from the pressure and find him open. Am I wrong? Or did CD Lamb get out of that pressure, escape the safety, and throw the ball to himself? Now, you can say, well, you're just a Dak Prescott. I'm recognizing you have to give credit where credit is due. It was one of the most incredible plays made this season. And not that many quarterbacks make that play. Just saying. And C.D. Lamb, understanding that his quarterback is bailing out, is right there understanding, I'm going to be the man getting this ball, and I'm taking it to the house. That's the two of them working together. I don't know that you get that with Cooper Rush. I don't know that you get that with Trey Lance. And so part of the equation may be CD wants to make sure Dak's going to be coming back too. Or he also, since him and Justin Jefferson, you know Justin Jefferson, um, are – one and one A and is waiting for Justin Jefferson to get his to make sure that he's right up underneath of there to maximize the amount of money he gets. Either way, we're good. Now, I want you to understand something here because you're hearing, is it possible that C.D. Lamb is not on the roster week one, that he, he's holding out? No, it's not. Because there was the Zeke Elliott rule that was put in. When the NFL was going through and trying to get the 17-game season, they gave a couple of little things to the NFL players. You know, we're, we're not going to test for weed. You know, if you want to, yeah, yeah, listen, we care about you guys. We want this extra game, and we hear that marijuana is good for head trauma. So we're not going to test for that. You know what? We're not going to be quite, quite as hard on the uniforms, you know? We're going to give you the, uh, the, the my cleats, my claws, so you can go ahead and do something extra. Um, in that, though, we're going to put a little something in here about holding out. That no longer, when you hold out of mandatory events, is it refundable? And oh, by the way, if you hold out for the season, you, you don't gain that year. So we still own your rights. And also, too... If you miss a preseason game, that's a game check. So everybody talks about, yeah, I'm going to hold out, I'm going to hold out. 
until the money situation kicks in and then they're there. So with CD, who is under contract and on his fifth year option, who could be franchise tag next year, there is um, no situation where he is not on the roster week one. Micah Parsons, who you have the fifth year option next year, who could be franchise tagged the year after, same thing. And Dak Prescott, who's under contract, who is, why am I in a hurry to sign a contract? I got $50 million, $55 million coming this year. So I'm paid. Um, I can wait. So the reality is the Cowboys don't have to do anything right now. And I believe that this is, when I look at how the Brandon Ayuk situation has been, where he definitely seems like he is not happy about the situation and there's true animosity, um, I don't see that in CeeDee Lamb and Dallas Cowboys. I don't see that with Dak Prescott, with Jerry Jones going to Dak Prescott's charity event and making a donation. I think, actually, it, it's we may not like the timetable that the Cowboys are working on. We may want to say they need to hurry up and do these things. But here's the rationale about all this. You know, whether they kept saying we need to hurry up and get Dak Prescott's deal done um, because it was going to cost us more, and it did. But in the grand scheme of things, when they finally got it done, that deal, be it a high number right now, was not a bad deal. The thing was, the Cowboys kept restructuring it. They had $17 million, they had a $19 million, and they had a $26 million cap hit. Even at 55, you look collectively across the board, it has not been that bad. And it hasn't precluded the Cowboys from making moves. What's precluded the Cowboys from making moves is the Cowboys don't make moves. They're the ones that did it. So whether or not they do this deal, and I believe that they're going to take this hit, this $55 million right now, clean that up, and start over with the deal for next year. That's my take. You know what I mean? It's kind of like my daughter who is um, going through her journey of paying off debt. She had $30,000 in debt. Okay, um, She is charting her journey with this she's cut it in half in six months which i am so proud of but the question is is do you go through and do you pay me now or do you pay me later sometimes you're better off paying that now getting rid of that so that way you don't have that debt that you're trying to work on later on too so yes his contract maybe it costs you two or three million dollars more if it's, you know, beginning of next year, that maybe the market's reset at 60. But you got rid of $55 million of debt off of this one. So, yeah, there's a surcharge for, for waiting on that. But we reduced $55 million. It's possible. All righty, so interesting take here. On the Cowboys and the schedule. Some people look at it and say the Cowboys will be dead and buried halfway through the season, that the season will be over. And I will say I remember the Cowboys starting out 3-5, and getting Amari Cooper in there, and turning it around and winning the division. We don't know who's going to be good and who's going to be bad. Teams that were good the year before, might not necessarily be good the next year. You could look at the Eagles, who were in the Super Bowl last year, fell off a cliff and weren't anywhere near as good as they were. That same thing could happen to San Francisco. Yes, Jason M., go ahead and fire me an email that I'm talking crazy, that automatically your team's going to be great. But typically, unless you are New England or Kansas City, teams that lose the Super Bowl Start going downhill. I'm going to go back through and check the numbers. Because I remember the Atlanta Falcons going to the Super Bowl. 
and crashed and burned. I can remember the Carolina Panthers crashing and burning. So we'll see how that works out. But listen to this. I think this is actually very, very poignant. Let's start with the Dallas Cowboys relatively quiet offseason, at least by Cowboys standards. They brought back Zeke Elliott. After Tony Pollard's departure to Tennessee, they signed all-pro linebacker Eric Kendricks. Uh, they lost some O-line vets, took in three offensive linemen in the draft to address a void, but again, lose some experience. There are plenty of eyes when Dallas opens up the season on Sunday afternoon in Cleveland against the Browns. Good luck if those rookies are playing against number 95, Miles Garrett. I'll take Cleveland. There'll be just as much attention on the broadcast booth as future <laughs> Hall of Famer Tom Brady will make his TV analyst debut at 425 Eastern over on Fox. Week 8 will be fun. Cowboys going west to face the Niners. Dallas has faced San Fran in two of the last three playoffs. By the way, both of them were losses. And what about Eagles-Cowboys? Mm -hmm. One of the best rivalries in the game returning in Week 10 at Dallas and then in Week 17 in beautiful South Philadelphia. One of the, them has claimed the NFC East title in each of the last three seasons. The last one to do it is Dallas. So will we see a repeat? We haven't seen in that division in two decades. Marcus, as we take a look at Dallas' schedule, what are your expectations for this team who've been very quiet this offseason. I'm praying to God that they surprise me because the expectations are low. I'm going to be honest, man. Like, this is not grim. I don't think Dallas is going to be a bottom tier team when we look at the league overall. But when you look <coughs> at the beginning of this schedule against the Cleveland Browns, we know what that defense is. And if you're in the business of not having a lot of firepower on that side of the football, honestly, coming back for the Dallas Cowboys this year offensively, two guys that Hope one guy we know is C.D. Lamb that you can depend on. Who else? Mm. Jake Ferguson emerged. Watch out Jackson. for Brandon Cooks this year. And I think he is going to be a model of consistency tight end-wise going forward. But you play the Cleveland Browns. Mm. Week three, you play the Baltimore Ravens. The Giants, obviously, is a, it should be a tough out defensively. Steelers, Lions. Buddy, in look the first at that six weeks of the season. Look at that week five to week 11 stretch. And, and, and let's not, like, so I don't... So, Let's already get this going uh -huh. for the Cowboy fans. Let me, let me, I'm not going to temper expectations because y'all don't listen. And I love y'all to death. I live amongst Ooh. you. But y'all going to think we're going to the playoffs and we're going to shock people and we're we going to have a we'll chance to make a run. That's what they think. The fan base. The fan base think it. I don't because this is not a business where you, ha you have to have talent. And when you think about the team, and, and that's what I keep trying to explain. When you think about Dallas, Let's focus on not making moves. That's fine. I focus on teams that make moves. Mm. And the teams that made moves over the last three to four years in this league, it's proved to pay heavy dividends having success. So I haven't seen a formula yet where you can let talent exit, get none, and expect to have success. No team has done it that we've watched play in the Super Ask Bowl over question. the last five years. Mm -hmm. As much as you can. Do we think there's a chance week one happens and CeeDee Lamb is not playing? No. He'll be playing. I was about to say. You think yeah. he'll be playing? With not, they're, 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 yeah. The CBA is set up that a player cannot sit out whether or not they have a deal. CeeDee Lamb is playing week one whether or not he has a new contract. Isn't the bigger story Dak Prescott's contract if they don't He's start off too. well? No, no, no. I get that. He'll play. It's the pressure and the conversation getting tighter and tighter Hell, around I everybody, think, I don't right? think it's hey. any pressure on Dak Prescott. No. I think all the pressure in the world on Dallas. Okay. Hey, right? What do you mean by that? Bro, if, go ahead. What, what yeah, th This is how Jerry likes it. He likes to put everybody's back to the wall. Mm -hmm. Mike McCarthy is in the last year of his deal. Yeah. Dak Prescott in the last year of his deal. Mm -hmm. Waiting for Micah Parsons and C.D. Lamb to be paid. Th th this is the first time, I think, because to your point, Chef, you make a great point. This is the first time where I feel like Dak Prescott back ain't against the wall. He just watched Kirk Cousins get $100 million guaranteed yeah. from that mm -hmm. level. So you're saying he, I got you, yeah. I got you. Yeah. The value of him on the free market? Yeah. Oh. Like, let's, let's, so, mm -hmm. and he's going to make 50 this year. 50, right. yep. 5 million. Like, so you. let's yeah. not kid ourselves into thinking Dak Prescott has some insurmountable amount of pressure. We've seen other quarterbacks get paid off of bad seasons and off injury. Mm -hmm. He's going to get paid regardless of I am of not worried about mental pressure. 
I am worried about the literal pressure the literal on Dak pressure. Prescott. Mm -hmm. And we talked about week one, where potentially two rookies starting on this offensive line. We'll see if Tyler Guyton and Cooper mm -hmm. Beebe start. I'm also looking at week three and four. You got Justin Matabike, Dexter Lawrence, arguably Shh. two of the five or six best defensive tackles in the NFL. Graz, let's start with the good. Who got it good yesterday? All right, so there you have it. Now, it, it's funny to me, and, and I'm working on something here too, um, with Brandon Cooks because, you know, right now we've got the whole, oh, man, it's just CeeDee Lamb. It's just CeeDee Lamb. Who else do you trust? I'm going to tell you that the way Brandon Cooks came on the second half of the season um, was nothing short of incredible. And if you look at the game logs and see the amount of receptions he had the second half of the season versus the first half, um, before the uh, Giant game, he never had – well, no, he did. He had the Arizona game. He had seven receptions for 17 yards. No. No, I'm sorry. He had two receptions for seven yards. But before that game – I mean, before that game against the Giants, he didn't have more than four receptions in a game. And then all of a sudden, you saw him start to get five, six, seven receptions, nine receptions. He became a great weapon, which also helped open up the door for CeeDee Lamb. And I believe that that's going to be the biggest key. And I'm going to, I'm going to go through the numbers because it is insane when you start looking at the game logs where the first eight games of the season, he only had one game over 10 yard per average. But then you start looking at almost every game after that, he blew up. I mean, we're talking 19, 14, 18, 11, 18, 12. And it's insane. And if we can get that Brandon Cooks, um, that kind of production, watch out, guys. Watch out. All right, good people. I am going to, uh, since we were talking about Justin Jefferson and things, I'm going to pull back a goodie, oldie but goodie. I fire Howie. Fucking fire him. Mom!